Today I'm going to show you how you can configure conditionally required fields in DocuSign. Let's get started. My name is Tom Kalinowski. I'm the Director of Technology and Operations at IU20. Today is October 22nd, 2021, and this is episode number 87 of Tech Tips. So we're going to go over um, how you can create conditionally required fields in DocuSign. So what that means is let's say you have a, uh, you have a document that you need to send out for a signature and uh, you have some text fields and maybe you have some signature fields, but not every field is required for every situation. Um, maybe some other field has to be filled out first prior to a signature being required. So I'm going to show you how you can configure that today. So let's uh, load an example or create an example template. So we first we'll want to click on templates. Okay. And then let's click on new and we'll go create template. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, name our template. Okay. We're going to upload a document. You can upload any, uh, any document. Here's our PDF that we're going to upload. Now we're going to specify the role of the person that needs to sign. Uh, and since this is a template, we're not going to use, uh, in this case, we're not going to use a specific name or email address. So we'll just say client. Okay. And that's, uh, in this example, that'll be the only person that signs. And now we'll go ahead and click on next. Okay. So here we have the, uh, template. So let's go ahead and, um, we're going to uh, put a text box here next to client name. And in this particular case, um, you could, uh, so they present you with the option either name or text box. So what name would be used for is if the typed name on the form is going to be the same name as the person that you're sending this document to for signature, then you can use name because when you go to send it out for signature, you're going to say, what's the name and email address of the person that you are sending this to. If that name is the same name as here, then by all means use name. Uh, but if it's not, if it's someone else's name, uh, we're just going to put a text box in there. So we have that text box there and we're going to say it's read only. And the reason why we're going to say it's read only is because uh, the document initiator is going to fill that out rather than the client themselves. Okay. And the same thing uh, for the client uh, insurance number, we're going to put that there and we're going to say that's read only. All right. So we're getting a little closer here. So these fields we're going to fill in. Now for this particular form, uh, it says it's an encounter form. So what that means is uh, maybe there is a meeting on this date and this date, um, but we don't want to have to every time we send this out, put a field in here for staff signature, staff signature, staff signature, etc. Ideally, we'd like to set those all up ahead of time and only require these signatures if there is a date here. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so let's take another text field and we'll uh, put it right here. Okay, got that. And again, we're going to say this is read only because we're going to fill this out, not the client. Okay. And we're going to scroll down here and we're going to go to validation. Okay. And we're going to say, let's make sure that this is a date. Perfect. Okay. And now let's just copy and paste that. You could do like control C, control V and just put those all in there. Okay. Uh, four of them is good for now. Now a little trick here. If we highlight all of them, You'll see on the left eye uh, or on the right here, um, it says we can align them left, right, top, bottom. So let's just go left. That'll make them all nice and neat there. Okay. And now let's put in, uh, oh, before we do that, hold on, let's go back here. Uh, and we did. Okay. So those are uh, read only. Perfect. All right. So now let's go put some signature fields in. Okay. Let's click on that and we're going to click here. Okay. It's required. Perfect. And we're going to just copy this and paste that a couple of times. Same deal. Put that there, there. Okay. And let's make those neat again. So we'll select them all. Click on the left. All right. So here is where we create the conditional requirement. Let me move my picture out of the way here. So we're going to go ahead and click on the first date of service. Okay. And we're going to scroll down. And it's going to say conditional field. Let's go ahead and click on that. Let's click create rule. And it says click on the fields to show when trigger field equals. So the trigger field is blue. So it's text there. And we're going to hit this and we're going to say 
um, in this case, any text. So anytime there's some text in that field, what field do we want to be conditionally required? It's going to be this sign field. Okay, does that make sense? So if this is blank, okay, this is not going to be uh, required. But if there's text in there, then it is going to be required. Okay, and let's click done. And we're going to do that for the next couple of them. So we click that next one, scroll down, conditionally uh, create rule, any text here, done. Okay, and we just have to do that a couple of more times. I'll speed it up here so you don't have to uh, watch me continually click. All right, so that's all done. So we have the uh, name, the client name, the client insurance number, dates of service, and all of the conditionally required fields. Okay, and let's go ahead and click on save and close. Okay, perfect. So we have this template. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and use this template. So let's go ahead and click on use. Okay, so who are we going to send this to? Um, we'll just send it to myself. Okay. We could put in a subject, we could put in an email message here. Um, before we hit send though, we want to go to advanced edit. And the reason why we want to go to advanced edit is we want to pre-populate that template uh, with a couple of, with some pieces of information. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on next. Okay, we have that here. Okay, so the client name. Okay, the insurance number. Okay. And we're going to put in some uh, dates of service. Okay, so let's say uh, this is 10 1 or 2 2021. Okay. And I should have made those fields just a little bit bigger. 10 3 2021. Okay, and we're going to do one more. 10 4 2021. Okay. And now the hope is, if we did this right, when we send this form, it's only going to require a signature on the top three rows here and not the remaining rows. Um, but the benefit of keeping all of those there, and ideally you would, you would fill out this entire form uh, just in case uh, there were that many encounters, uh, but by filling those out all one time in the template, you'll never have to do it again, and then you can use this template for one encounter or up, up to ten encounters, however many different rows there are in the form, uh, without having to make modifications every single time you send out a form. So let's switch over to uh, what the view is that the client sees. Okay, so the client's going to get a message like this. They're going to go ahead and click on Review Document. Okay, and it says please review and act on these documents. <clears throat> so they're going to go ahead and click on continue. Okay, and we see that the name's filled in already, as is the client insurance number, all the dates of service. There could have been other information here, right? And we only see signature fields for these three. Now in the background, when we all saw it, the signature fields were visible on all of them, but in this case they are not visible because we did not specify dates here. So to sign, again, we'll just click here and see my awesome signature. That's it. So that's how you go ahead and create a conditionally required signature. You can create a conditionally required anything, really. You could create a conditionally required text field. Um, so maybe it says... Um, uh, it asks you to answer a question with radio buttons, and it's like A, B, C, or other, and maybe you want to uh, say if they select other, then this text field is required. So that, that would be another use case of how you might use this. But I hope you found that tip valuable. If you have any other questions about DocuSign or anything else, I'll gladly do a uh, tech tip on that. I know the uh, IU20 staff are in the middle of switching over to DocuSign, so again, I'd be happy to do any other demonstrations of questions that you might have about DocuSign. That's all for today. I hope you have a great weekend.